Hey, I'm Alex Rackliff from Board Game Co. I'm Professor Meg. And today we're doing a playthrough of Vampire the Masquerade Milan Uprising, which I think the mic may have stopped me there. It is Vampire. a huge box. It is a huge box. Vampire the Masquerade Milan Uprising. This is a taboo game. This is also a paid playthrough. Please take that into account as we explore the first introductory scenario of Vampire the Masquerade. To that end, also worth noting that uh, I've only briefly dived into this to kind of get a feel for what the game is before stopping to play so I can actually explore it with you. And Meg has not explored it at all. I have no idea what I'm doing. None whatsoever. And she feels here for the ride. totally comfortable with that. This looks amazing. Yeah, have you played? Do you know anything about the Tiber system? Only a little bit. Is it? So I, just from the table, I can tell that we're plugged in. Yes, we are. And we got this like little power strip thing there. I believe when we roll die. Now, do you have to roll and then put it back there for it to know what you rolled? So over here, the only reason they're over here right now is that's where they get charged. So instinctively, oh. specifically on that side. Now, the dice should have enough power to last the entire session, but I am So neurotic. you can roll them anywhere and it will track you can roll, roll them anywhere. I see. Yeah. Well, now, cool. prototype dice, these are not the official fact-made ones, which means even for my for my sample session early, I can tell you that sometimes you might have to re-roll it. Uh, but ideally, again, these are all handmade. They're literally taking dice and carving the components into them because this is a prototype. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, all rules and components up to change. Thank you. And uh, we'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. Also, because I'm using the phones for uh, running the system, <laughs> I may get occasional calls and notifications that we'll have to mute as we go along. Yeah, so this music that's playing is through the app? Yes, it's um, through the app itself. It is music that we are playing. Actual music, in case you were trying to pause what That's was going us. on in the background. That's us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put this box off to the side. We're going to dive into this, and uh, what other things do I have to tell you? I don't know. We're vampires. We are vampires. Well, I was about to say, I don't know a lot about the world of Vampire the Masquerade in general. I know it's based on, there's a lot of things in that world. There's another game RPG. in the system. These the uh, chapters game. It's mm -hmm. RPG. A bunch of things going on there. My only real knowledge of the system is that you're vampires, and you're hidden from the humans, and that's kind of what's going on here. Uh, we're going to have the Taboo system run us through the actual game. It's going to be the board. All these are put onto the actual Taboo system. So it's going to be a console system where you'll have the console, the Taboo console, and then you'll have various games you can overlay on top of it. So for example, their last game was Bad Karma's and the Curse of the Zodiac, which was a boss battling experience. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is more of a narrative adventure as we go around the board and interact with various elements as we go through it, spending our action economy as we can to try to drive our motivations and goals forward, which those are things that are going to be uncovered as we go through the, the journey. Now, Alex, you set a lot of this up, so I, for the Tabaroo system, yes. how is it running? How, what do you mean it's by just running? plugged in and that's it? It's plugged, the, 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 the thing is plugged in, which by the way, I believe the plan is to have a battery pack in some way, shape, or form or mm -hmm. something. It shouldn't always need to be plugged in, but this kind of, you have the board and the app and the technology overlays and it knows where things are. And as we move around the board, as we roll dice, it's going to kind of interact with this kind of a half, a half digital, half a analog experience. Okay. But with that, we're going to go ahead and start us off. Uh, again, we'll deal with this, uh, the first few rounds, I should say. The first few rounds are run very much like a tutorial. So Meg's going to be learning, you're going to be learning. We're going to be going through this as it kind of tells us what to do. After the first round of play, we get a lot more agency. But the first round's kind of like, do this here, do that there. Because the goal is that you should be able to jump straight into this experience without reading a rulebook. That's the goal. Um, that I mean, that's what I did. I, I didn't read a rulebook at all. I just played with the app and did I'm things. I'm so interested. There's these like little inlays and it reminds me of Robin Hood and I just feel like there's secrets and I want to pick at them but I want to look at what's under there but I know I shouldn't obviously probably. It's probably hidden for a secret. Also like what the, the worst part is what if you actually open one there's nothing there and you get disappointed but the final game has something there but this is a prototype. That would be amazing. What if only one of these has something there? Who knows? What if? I haven't actually looked so I don't know. But with that we're going to go and dive into it. Starting off we're going to continue over here. Loading. I did look at one. Did you actually Before look at one? Yeah, I had like a symbol on it. Okay. <laughs> so, confirmation when this icon appears, the player who controls the indicated character must, character must confirm. Okay, should I read this? Oh, uh, sure, go for it. It says Chinatown restaurants. One. Oh, oh my gosh. He's not reading it. With a long and colorful history. Should we let him do it? Secretly the home of monsters. Vampires that manipulate and prey on the populace from the shadows. These vampires, or kindred as they prefer to be called, are paranoid and territorial creatures that exist as different families and factions, not all of which see eye to eye. Mm. The Camarilla are an elite society of kindred that are dominant in many cities around the world. They maintain a feudal society that respects the privileges of the eldest and most powerful among them. The 
Anarchs are a collective of younger vampires who reject this status quo and who fight against <laughs> any attempts by their elders to control them. The city of Milan is ruled by Prince Prospero, a powerful elder kindred who sides with the Camarilla. His grip on the city is slipping, however, as more and more Anarchs flock to the city to challenge his rule. The safety of the kindred of Milan is also threatened by other forces. What could they be? Groups of mortal men and women in the government, in the church, and in the city's local communities have learned of the existence of the kindred and work covertly to expose and destroy them. The kindred have labeled these efforts to hunt them a second inquisition in Milan. The most active vampire hunters, a coalition of special forces and Vatican-backed specialists, call themselves the Hand of St. Ambrose. Hmm. Your coterie, a close-knit group of kindred, are rising stars of the Anarch movement that have traveled to Milan to support the cause and to depose Prince Prospero. The local Anarchs are in disarray after the destruction of their former leader, Zivko Batrovic. There are several Anarch factions, but their leaders will not meet with you until you have proven yourselves. You are known to a local Anarch vampire named Katya, who owes you a favor and has offered to help set you up in Milan. She has found you a haven, Gloomhaven? somewhere secure, where you can sleep during the day in Chinatown. From your base in Chinatown, you are free to explore and investigate the rest of the city. Your first task is to establish control of your own domain, territory in the city, before you can command the respect of the local anarchs and demand a seat at their table. You must also gather money, favors, allies, and contacts that you can use to influence others and to protect your districts from enemies who will then want to take back from you. Okay. So, at this point, we've gone through all the uh, initial setup. We are a group of Anarchs, or rising stars within the system, uh, working possibly with or sort of with the various elders who have a degree of control. We have the vampire hunters who are taking us over, and we have two objectives. You can gain control of a new location within the first night and gain three resources? Yes. These are the first steps to gain credibility with the other Einarchs of Milan. Let's start with the game basics. This is going to be the tutorial stuff. Meg? Okay. Action points. During your character's turn, you have three action points, AP, to perform actions. Spending one willpower grants an additional AP. Characters can be moved to adjacent districts called locations using one AP. Move your miniature to the Semipion? Semipion location. location. We're heading over here. Okay. So which one is she? So this that one? one, yes indeed. And where is the, the circle center spot? This? Right there. Gosh, it sounded like Zelda. <laughs> okay. Investigate. Investigate is the most important action of the game and is crucial to acquire knowledge about the districts of Milan. This action costs one AP and ends the turn after its resolution. So I got 3 AP and it made me move and just investigate. Yeah, well, I'm moving like, was, hey, tutorial. Moving was at 1 AP and now we can go ahead and... But it says it ends your turn after. Yes. Okay. Wild dogs! Encounters. The, invest the investigate action reveals up to three encounters of the location. Each encounter type has a specific purpose. Uh, we're obviously going to do the dogs one. Oh my gosh, it's letting it us It makes too. you, do, not let you, it makes you do the dogs. Okay, so it says uprising encounter. Let's start with the uprising encounter. Uprising encounters are the main way to influence and control locations. Select the encounter. What's about those? Is he gonna say it? No. You have heard that a gangrel vampire is based in the Sempion district. The park has been linked to stories of large dogs running wild and terrorizing local people. It seems likely that the park may be where the kindred lair this kindred lairs. You arrive in the early evening to find the park still open to the public. 
You see several joggers and people walking their dogs, which are clearly domesticated and not the animals you're looking for. You can scent the aromas of dozens of different plants in the air. The silhouette of Zafra's castle looms in the background. What will you do, Simona? We can ask the local passerbys if they have seen anything suspicious. Oh, but it's making us do that. Well, we, we do the options. In theory, okay. the theoretical other options. Search the darker corners of the park for anything unusual. And call out a challenge and see if anyone responds. So we're asking the local passerbys. Hey, does anyone know what's going on around here? A figure of a man emerges from the shadows, flanked by large, feral-looking dogs. He wears a battered de denim jacket and sports a large, unkempt beard of dark hair. You strongly suspect him to be a fellow kindred. And he's got dogs. He explained that his name is Skinner, and that the park, and that the park and its in oh my gosh environs are his domain. He asks for your help in retrieving a dog of his that was captured by a rival. He is reluctant to leave his territory in case anything happens to his other animals while he is gone. Encounter continues in San Siro. We're going to save a dog. Maybe. We're going to try to save a dog. Oh, we're going to do so, it. So this is going to be our player sheet over here. We have our player sheet, which is going to give us our various stats that we have. I don't know how well you can see that on the uh, camera screen, but it's got update anyway. Map update. When the map needs to be updated for any reason, the game shows all changes on both the digital map and the game log. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and add influence over here. Influence. After solving an uprising encounter, add an anarch cube. An anarch cube is placed in the location. Cubes represent the faction influence. There can be a max of three cubes of a single faction inside a location. Okay. Location bonuses. When the first phase when the first phase of an uprising encounter is solved, the location bonus is revealed. Location bonuses are represented by square tokens that must be flipped only when using only when the game indicates. Each bonus adds a special action inside the location if controlled by anarchs. Anarchy. Latbler's turn. I believe Latbler is myself. Yep. So basically, short version of what's going on so far is let me just make sure to read this. Uh, the Septimian Encounter has not yet completed. Its next phase is in San Siro. That's going to be over here. To move this, you must make your movement step by step. Move your miniature to the Three Towers location. Basically, whenever you move to the game, even though I'm moving from this character, you don't go straight to that location. You start by going over here, which has a little registering of the noise. And then from there, we're going to continue. You can now move to San Siro over here. Then as we do so, we're going to have... Reveal three encounters location. And we have Uprising Wild Dogs Part yes. 2. And then we have a variety of other effects, which we will not be doing. We're going to be doing Wild Dogs Part 2 to continue. Well, I'm glad that's what we wanted anyway. That's what we wanted. This would have been difficult. You have a description of Skinner's missing animals. A large German shepherd named Caesar with a torn ear and a patch of white fur on his chest. Skinner has also given you the pop of the particulars of his rival Monica, an athletic Italian woman with long, straight, platinum and blonde hair and a tattoo of a scorpion on her neck. Mm. Unfortunately, however, he is not able to tell you exactly where she sleeps or hangs out at night, other than it's somewhere in the San Siro district. You will need to locate her somehow. Gosh. What will you do, Latbrother? We can ask around the neighborhood and hope you get lucky, or we can use your local street knowledge to identify likely locations. I don't have much local street knowledge. I've only just moved here back from uh, somewhere else. We're going to ask around and hope we get lucky. It's our first choice of making. So we're going to go ahead and roll three dice to make a skill check over here. All stats involved in the ability check are now revealed. The amount of dice rolled is equal to the character's corresponding attributes. So you get to roll more dice depending on what attributes you have. The skill determines the number of automatic successes. So again, there's going to be some skills that will give us a certain number of automatic successes. We can go ahead and tap that. And the investigation roll three dice. Do you roll one at a time? I don't. I have to double check. I think I've been rolling them two and then one. The number of successes must be higher than or equal to the approach difficulty to succeed. The higher the approach risk, the worse the consequences can be for both success and failure. You went with asking around? I went with asking around to get lucky. I, I'm trying. I'm trying. All right, we're going to go ahead and roll three dice over here. And we're going to roll the first two. And we got two successes, which registers on the app. We're going to take out one of those dice and go ahead and roll again. And we got, ooh, that's not that's good not over good. there. Which it will. It didn't register it. it let's see. One second. Something to. Let's see. I just don't want to like get the register. There we go. Okay. I want to mimic the uh, actual success as we go through it. Success is one out of two. That's unfortunate. Spend one willpower to reroll oh. one die. 
Ah, uh, fine. Do it! I'm gonna spend a willpower. Okay. Let's go, success. That should be enough. Success. The negative face takes away from your successes, and then there's uh, blind faces, red successes, and then there's critical successes. Success! Hey. Confirm. I'm glad you did that. Yeah, it's definitely my choice. I definitely saw that. Some locals recognize her description and pivot you and point you to a nearby sports bar. Okay. Yeah. I didn't realize how this. Yeah, the way it's set up is you have a controlled uh, hub, so to speak. I don't which have a normally, tablet. normally I'd run with a tablet. I just don't have one here at the moment. And then you have your con your individual controllers. Mm -hmm. You find Monica in the bar watching soccer with her friends and with an animal matching the description of Skinner's missing pet at her feet. As you approach, she's dismissive of you, but when she realizes that you are kindred, she agrees to go outside for a private conversation. She's That's weird. She's just hanging out with a dog at a bar. Yeah, it's weird. That's weird. She explains that she has a long history with Skinner. He is her sire, the kindred who made her a vampire. And for a time, they were intimate. The dog is familiar with her and came with her willingly. She has kept the animal to spite her former lover. Sounds mm. fair. Just mess with the dogs. What will you do, Latvala? Convince Monica to make peace with her rival for the sake of the bigger picture? Or bully and threaten Monica into giving you the animal? Or give up. We're not going to give up, obviously. Now, there are difficulties. There's medium. There's risk. Uh, do we convince her? I don't feel like I'm the bullying and threatening type. Like I said, I just moved here. So we're going to go ahead with convincing Monica to make peace with her rival. Okay. We're going to see how it goes. Roll three dice again. Roll well. I'm worried about the dog. Like, this is, this matters. Uh-oh. That's not great. We got this one over here. We got blank. And then this one was a blank, which I'm going to have to mimic. There we go. We got two out of four. Now, we had two automatic successes. We are going to confirm failure, unfortunately. Monica stubbornly refuses your request. It said difficulty low. By the way, for the record, when I first played this, I rolled none of these skull faces ever. But, Monica stubbornly refuses your request, and what will you do, Lafka? We can bully and threaten her. Well, I guess now we're going to bully and threaten her. That seems a bit reasonable. She's yeah. not going to make peace willingly. I'm upset a little bit. <laughs> I should have you roll. Okay, that's, I mean, honestly, better than the last one, but it's not going to be good anyway because I don't have intimidation. Wow. Wow. You could re-roll that one. Nope. Nope. Confirm failure. This is l abysmally bad. You could have re-rolled it. Because you had one more willpower. Oh. Uh, no. Monica laughs at your posturing and rejects your demands. Encounter continues in Sempion. We have negative one willpower and plus two XP as a result of the encounter. See, you lost it anyway. I think I lost it earlier. I could be wrong. You had oh, wait, two. negative one. You're right, negative one, you said. Alright. Okay. That is the first two characters. Update the map displayed. We're going to go ahead and put down... Oh, we already have the token there. We should be fine. Okay. Orlando's turn. I believe I'm doing Orlando? No, I am. You're doing Orlando. Wasn't his name something else before? It was. I don't know where it we was. got that from. It was uh, Nosferatu. No, Nosferatu, yeah. You now have a chance to conclude the Sempion Uprising encounter and take control of the location. Move your miniature to the Sempion location. It's over here. He's this. Yes, he's the hooded dude. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Reveal three encounters. We'll investigate. I'm gonna do Wild Dogs Part Three, obviously. Oh, it's gonna make us anyway. You have no choice. Again, the first round is very much on wheels. You knew this was gonna be about saving dogs, and we failed. I mean, I knew we would be about saving dogs. I did not know we'd fail. Some encounters can be very difficult if confronted alone. In these cases, a participation confirmation is asked to all of the characters with enough AP to join the active character, even characters in adjacent locations. Hmm. Dante Brewer, do you want to join the encounter? That's me, so I'm going to say yes. Simone Ferrasi, do you want to join the encounter? Let's party, everybody. Okay. So they have to go ahead and join the location. Do you have to scan them in? No. I might have to double check, actually. I could be wrong. No, I believe they're sorry. They may stay where they are. They may stay where they are. Well, it says update the map as displayed. Yep. We should be fine. Okay. You return to the park empty hand you return to the park empty handed. Skinner is not impressed with your failure. He senses your intentions regarding his domain and says he will fight to defend his territory. You must face Skinner and his pack of animal companions together. This really for the record, one of the nice things about this is I haven't gotten very far in this game. But this is totally different than the last way I played out. I wanna start over. Uh we can do that later. Go ahead. 
It's difficult to be hard. It only too. lets me fight. Well, at least you roll better than roll I Roll one die. Go ahead. Okay. Oh, interesting. Roll Am I supposed dice. to be doing this yeah. time? No, 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 no time, no time, no time, no time. How do you know? It's no time, it's no time. Okay. Beautiful. That was all three. Next, yeah, it was great. You're doing great. No, it didn't register though. One of them was a blank. No, no, it, no, no, no. It only counts two successes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So roll the next one. Roll. You're doing so much better than I am. I should have saved Whoa. the dog. Okay, roll the last one. Wait, no, roll one. I think roll I one. Did. Roll one. Nope, it's missed. It didn't register one. There we go. That's what it was. Perfect. You already got success successes out of the five. I didn't know you'd be so good at fighting animals. I kissed animals. the dogs. I kissed them. I kissed them. You defeat Skinner in combat, covered in wounds that would kill a mere mortal. He admits defeat and acknowledges your coterie as, as the controllers of Sempion. I just roll really well. I I, it was a little obnoxious considering how badly I rolled. <laughs> plus one hunger, plus two XP, plus one hunger, plus two XP, plus one hunger, plus two XP. Basically all the characters are getting hungry because they've Great. been doing things. So, objective completed, objective completed. Again, the fun part is you're doing... We had a worse outcome, but we actually succeeded in the end result, which I did not do last time. You receive a phone call from Katja, congratulating you on your efforts in Sempiome. She says, though, that you shouldn't rest easy. Now that you have territory, you will need to defend it. Once word of your claim has spreads, it is inevitable that some other kindred will try to challenge your coterie for it. Alright. Okay. Anarch is now controlling Sempion, so we should go ahead and... Um, Anarch now something has now one Anarch influence. We should be putting an Anarch influence in here. Okay. And I believe we should be swapping this out. Where's the control marker? Do we not have a control marker? Well, we're going to get a control marker. We are now controlling Sampion. Okay. Update the map as indicated. Your hunger has just increased. Hunger represents your drive to feed on the blood of mortals and animals. For each hunger point, one die becomes a hunger die. Red. Red dice cannot be rerolled using willpower. Okay. When an ability check is failed, a, a skull on a red die leads to a bestial, a bestial fail. The character's hunger increases by one. When an ability check is successful, a pair of criticals involving a red die leads to a messy critical. The suspicion <laughs> increases by one. A messy critical. Basically, red dice are bad. <laughs> the blood went everywhere. When you draw too much attention from mortals, the suspicion increases. When it reaches four, the masquerade decreases by one. The Masquerade is an organized campaign enforced by kindreds to convince people that vampires don't exist. They don't, by the way. They really don't. There's no, no such thing as vampires. If the Masquerade reaches Oops. zero, then uh, nothing happens. Move your minions to an adjacent location. Oh, wait, no. Wait, Sempion. Jeez. Okay. A enemy influence. The location adjacent to Chinatown is influenced by the Camarilla. Move your miniature to the monumental location. That's going to be where over here. Where's monumental? It's over here. There we go. Your phone is hot. When you move inside a location with at least one enemy influence cube, which we just did, an enemy encounter may trigger. If solved with success, an influence cube is removed from the location. Regardless of the encounter result, the player's turn automatically ends again. Mm -hmm. I believe this is my person again, right? Yep, this is you. This is Dante. After the rolling, I wish it was your turn. An Arnark resident of Monumental heard rumors about the problems you caused in Sempion. He thinks you might be the right person to identify a mysterious pouch containing macabre contents they found near the Haven. You recognize the items as components of a scrying ritual used by blood sorcerers. The tremors of the Camrilla are spying on their enemies. There are likely more similar pouches to be found across the district. Mm. What will you do, Dante? What will you do, Dante? Okay, so, well, we don't have a choice yet. Discipline. Uh, some approaches can only be selected by characters with specific discipline. The rewards of the approaches are usually greater. Select the indicated approach of using your own occult skills to define the locations of the other scrying approach. It's blood sorcery specifically, which we are good at. Or, I, we would be good at if I rolled better. When discipline check is activated, the player must perform a, a rouse check. A rouse check consists of rolling a die, and if the result is a failure, no, the hunger increases by one. I actually got a success. Good. Which didn't register. Oh, because I, I wasn't supposed to roll yet. Great. That's when I got a success. Well. Nope. Wait one second. When the character's hunger is five, they can't use disciplines or actions with the cost of hunger. If it would exceed five, the beast takes control of the vampire and the suspicion increases by two. Mm. 
I still got the success. Good. Good, because I... Honestly, the way I've been so polite about re-rolling my failures, I should have actually gone for that. Yeah. Roll three dice. So now we only just earned the right to actually roll over there. And two of our dice are hunger dice, unfortunately. We got... It's unbelievable. I think mean, that's okay, right? It's it's not the worst, but it's... um. Whoa. Yeah. Okay, good. So this is five out of four. Beautiful. Okay. So, confirm. Continue. You're drawn to a dozen hiding places where you find similar caches. Plus one XP. Plus one resources. What does XP do? Uh, XP is going to be something we spend later. We'll have opportunities to spend XP to update our statistics. I mean, I know what it does well, as a concept. So, uh, in this game, we're going to have the opportunity to spend XP shortly. Like, not just in like the future, but soon. Sunrise phase. Now, normally, is it right now in the sunrise phase? I believe it's That'd right be after. Hilarious. Yes. So normally, well, let's read through the app. You just completed the third round of the first night. Rounds are called hours. So it's said over there the third round of the first night. And generally, what happens is you play through uh, three rounds at a time, and then you go to the um, the night phase. I believe in the tutorial they kind of skip some of the stuff so you can go straight quicker to the night phase to get a sense of how it plays out. Mm -hmm. Each night is composed of three hours. And now you can go ahead and tap forward. Okay. At the end of the third hour, the sunrise phase begins. During this phase, vampires need to protect themselves from the sun and must return back to their haven. Mm. They also can increase their capabilities by spending their gained XP. Good question, mm. you asked. That was so untimely. Simona's turn. You're Simona, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, in this phase, the active player must be placed in one of the haven rooms. These are the six haven rooms over here. These four over here don't really have anything going on yet, hence why the dice tray is there. They will be upgraded later. Then the player must choose which action they want to take there. Each room has its own specific set of actions, also displayed on the physical map. So, if you look at the rooms, you'll see extra willpower, extra willpower, uh, spending three and getting one AP, uh, two willpower, plus two XP, but minus one blood Or Go ahead. Uh, what's up? Oh, you have to, oh, you have to choose. You have to choose. So you're spending three what for the AP? Three uh, resources to get plus one action point. How do I know my resources? Um, I don't know if you can see it over here. We have Is hunger. It in here somewhere? I'm not sure uh, if it shows it over there. Hunger XP eight actions four, actions three. I'm not sure if it shows you what you have. No, I don't think you can check right now. Uh, I know we gained. Oh, over here, over here. Uh, resources are collective. Oh, it's okay. on the main tab. Okay. Okay. So you can go ahead and select. Um, so we only have one resource, which means we can't do much with that. And it's her? Yes. I'll go get a willpower. Yes. Not the most exciting, but it seems like it's the basic thing oh, we're doing. Cool. Gain one willpower, so you can go ahead and rest. So tap the resting over there. Where? Oh. Plus one willpower, which Huzzah. will help us later. Again, this is a very basic uh, resting phase. Lockbrother's turn. Lockbrother's also going to go ahead and rest, shockingly enough. Po -po -po. I do like the sounds in this app. It's fun. It's like very... Zelda? It, it, it's like cherry but spooky. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once the, one of the personal rooms is a simple but comfy place to sleep. Okay. Additional willpower. And whose turn is next? Orlando. Orlando. So he has two willpower, so I'm thinking about having him go here to heal his blood hunger. Go for it. You're going to get two XP as well. Yeah. So pay two. Yep. Oh, it's to gain two XP or. Oh PR. my god, I clicked uh, the wrong one. Oh my gosh. Let me you move too that. fast. You move too fast. Can we undo it? Where did mm -hmm. you have undo? The undo, I don't think, is in this uh, version of the app okay. yet. Okay. They do have an undo plan. It's just that was my own fault. I clicked before reading. Okay. That was me. I'm going to go ahead and go here. There is a slash to be clear. I know. That was me. I tapped. I wanted to heal my hunger. Plus one willpower, and I believe that's going to conclude the night phase. Beautiful. There's a knock on the door of your haven. A man's voice calls out saying he's a friend of Katja's. Ooh. You open the door to a wirely bald man wearing a dark polo neck and a long sheepskin coat. He says his name is Jurgen, that he's Katja's goal servant. He says Katja's gone missing and that he needs your help in locating her. You want to move mm. forward? He's not sure if the Camarilla may have found her or whether she may be ambushed by mortal vampire hunters. He asks if he can stay with your coterie until her face until her fate is determined. He says he is a fixer who knows how to get things going, who knows how to get things, and he is willing to offer you services and in recompense and recompense for your hospitality and your vitae. Vitae. 
New goal, new goal. Fix it. We have a new goal in play. Ghoul. Ghoul. We have a new goal in play. It was G H O U L, not G O A L. In this phase, experience can be spent to improve the character's stats. Attributes increase the dice pool. Skills increase automatic successes, and discipline increases the automatic successes at the cost of hunger. Uh, powers also gained at higher levels. Okay. All right. So right now, on your individual stat tree over here, you'll have the opportunity to go ahead and spend stats. So you want to just tap the thing you want. Let me just go ahead and show everyone, so we can kind of see what's going on here. I don't know how well you can see that there, but there's going to be a bunch of stats on there. You have the opportunity to choose, and each one has a stat cost. Okay, it looks like this is your person. This is, oh, this is my person. Well, never mind then. Okay, so I have 9 XP. Bumping up my education even further would cost me 9. I want to bunch my persuasion. I like persuasion. Confirm. Okay, okay. Labra, is, Labra is mine as well. Mm -hmm. And so I have 10 XP. I could do my disciplines. Unlock a 3, move max distance. I think I'm going to, I have 10, I'm going to go ahead and unlock celery. Or do I want attributes? Attributes, I can't do attributes. I can do mental attributes, or I can do my disciplines. I think I'm going to go ahead and just bump up my, uh, I don't know. I heard celery, that's why I was like, Celerity, what? celerity. <laughs> I'm going to do up, update my celerity, confirm. Okay. okay to you. All right. Celerity so help me move max distances. We have further. Orlando, I have 10. Um... I don't understand how you do this. How do you get the action point? Uh, action points you won't get from here. It's oh, I thought it said AP. Points. No, no, no. There's athletics, there's intimidation, there's... The the attributes will bump up your automatic successes, and the skills will let you roll more dice, I believe. So depending on the kind of challenge, you'll have more automatic successes or more dice rolling, or alternatively, spending uh, hunger. Or spending willpower. Hmm. Spending something. Let's go crazy. Let's do education... I'm gonna do all the three ones: education, larceny, persuasion. I don't know. That's bad. You want to be I like all spread out. That's wrong. jack of all trades. Yeah, I, I don't want to though. Actually, let's uh. Oh my gosh, why is this hard? Let's do combat. Okay, and then for Simona, she only has eight. Now, if you'll notice, by the way, the types of interactions you'll find at a location are listed here. So, Meg, if you see on the board, you'll see mm -hmm. these show you the types of interactions. That helps you give you a reason why you're choosing these different things. I'll talk about her athletics too. Athletics. I don't know. Go for it. <laughs> There's too many choices right now. So is it overwhelming? It's overwhelming. Too many. There's like twelve. <laughs> Day phase. After the sunrise phase, the day phase begins. Here, the hand of Saint Ambrose takes its actions following a hidden agenda. When they would place a fourth cube instead inside a location, they instead take uh, control of it. Wow. Okay, so we should be putting a cube over here. One second, we need to put down a cube over here in this location. And then we need to place a cube down over, interesting, over here it looks like. We should be putting one cube here and two cubes here, I believe. Or do you think it should be two total? Uh, it's just a two total. It's popping up the two, I'm not certain. We'll put two down and see what happens. I think maybe you're right. Because otherwise it's showing one here when there should already be one here. You can move influence cubes of any factions by solving uprising encounters, Camilla or the Hand of St. Pro, Ambrose encounters, or sabotage encounters. Okay. All right. Sunset phase. Time for us to come out, because we're vampires. After the day phase, the sunset phase begins. At the start of this phase, vampires awaken from the rest, and their hunger increases by one. Gosh. Yeah. I'm hunger so is... mad I didn't heal my hunger. Plus one hunger, plus one hunger, plus one hunger, and plus one hunger. Okay. I think if I turn this down, it helps a little bit. Jurgen comes to you waving a, a copy of a local newspaper. He has turned the publication to the second page and has ringed a specific article. Jurgen doesn't believe the story. He thinks that the story may be a cover for clandestine government backed vampire hunger activity. He says that it would be dangerous, but it might be worth investigating further. It might. Okay. During this phase, you can place any number of available allies and ghouls on the map, but only one per location. Allies are free to use, but can't be placed every night. Ghouls have a constant hunger, but no cooldown. Mm. So we should have a ghoul over here. Only one ally ghoul per location can be placed. Each of them gives a different bonus to nearby locations. And if you want to tap on... Oh, I should have the ability? No, you have to tap... Oh, oh wait, sorry, no, sorry. Uh, Jurgen. So cost one hunger. So we can go ahead and scan him over here. Do we want him? Uh, we could put him. Okay. So we're going to scan him on here. I'm going to put down, where do you want to put him? 
Should I do something? No, just go ahead and uh, I think we put it down here like so. The fixed goal has been placed. Who will give you their who will give their blood? Well, I chose, so I guess I'll do it. Uh, make Dante give his blood. Dante's like already really hungry. Okay, make a uh, Lapura give her blood. Yeah, she's the one that's the least anyway. And then you can do done. Okay. Move your miniatures to. Oh, there we go. Sunfit phase will begin. Night two has begun. Update map is displayed. I think that is. Oh, that has a three. It's supposed to be a three over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think you're right, so, but yeah. this should only be one, and this should be there. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but there's yep, and there's two. Now. Okay. This over here, these are all supposed to be back, I believe, on here. I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. We we'll go ahead and do the confirm. Simona's turn. Okay. During the next hours, you'll be completely free to act. If you're not sure what to do, you can try to solve the main objectives by selecting the objectives section. Okay. What are our main objectives? Ooh, oh, oh. One of the objectives asks you to collect one of the currencies of the game. Resources represent valuable goods like cash and industrial assets and contexts like politicians and VIPs. Map icons. Location types. Represented by an icon at the center of the location are mainly used for encounters for investigation clues. Each type has an associated attribute, which they are most commonly used attribute by encounters of locations of that type. Okay, our objectives are gain three resources by solving resources encounters. And the other one we did? Gain a new location within the first... Oh, wait. This is different now? Okay. Quarterly objectives. Oh, so more, more got added. So we have to find Katya... Investigate the Marriott Hotel in Washington and control three locations by completing uprising encounters. Or gain three resources by resolving resource encounters. Well, okay. not or. Or another objective. That sorry. was the first yeah. one I read. Okay. You get to go ahead and move to a new location. Go back to your stats for a second and just move around. So you could reveal three locations at your current location or you could wander around the board. You have three actions. And it's one action to move how much? One. Just one? I believe so. Okay, where is the Washington one? The Washington one? Right here. Mm. Why are you looking for Washington? The, I, the thing I just read said we want to go there. That the makes objectives. sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Alright, so which one is she? This one? You have to go one spot at a time. So, I guess here probably. On the dot. Yeah, that's one. Uh, it looks like you still have action, so you may be able to move two. Okay, yep, yeah, that used up in action. Ooh. As soon as you enter the neighborhood, you sense that something is off. You feel a thousand eyes on you and realize it's too early to venture into someone else's domains. You decide to retrace your steps. What? I didn't like you going into uh, the Castillo location. Did it kick me out? Yep. We have to put you back. To here? Yep. Yeah, no, you're good. You're good. Okay. Okay. You can either gain resources, you can investigate, or you can continue moving. And we just need three resources? Seems like it. Gain two resources in action does seem pretty good. That might be because we revealed this location, though. Maybe. Protection racket, extortion, and drug dealing. Your small source of income. It helps. Two resources. I think that puts us at three already. Yeah. Objective completed. That puts us at three Huzzah! already. Okay. So you just move around. Oh, Lapras turn. Oh, there you go. oh, my turn. Okay. So your way did not unfortunately work for us. So I will try going. I didn't want to go here. Well, it said it wasn't late enough. We need to do the things where we take mm -hmm. places over. But how do we take places over if we don't? Yeah, if not able to go there, I guess we can go to. Well, but I also wanted it to be late at night. So, so I'm maybe... gonna go one, and then two. Because no one has that one. You're right. Okay, and then we're going to reveal three encounters at this location. And we have Uprising, Busted Lunatic Part 1. We have a resource location, Corrupt Corp. We have a hunt location, Share the Love. And we have Investigate More Encounters, which we can always find in action. So that was, hmm. What were our objectives over here? Objectives are control three locations by completing Uprising Encounters. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do an upgrade, Uprising Encounter. 
You have heard that a Malakan vampire named Elio has taken over an influential church community group in San Siro. Elio is rumored to engage in torture and bloodletting practices which are difficult to reconcile with the group's public image. You figure that if you can expose Elio's dark side, then the community group will severe its ties with him and would also owe you their assistance. For assistance. What will you do, Lakbra? We can leverage our local street connections in the hope that they can give you a lead on Elio. We can do some sleuthing to determine where Elio is in, known to hang out. Or we give up the search for now. What's with all this giving up stuff? I don't, I'm not impressed with the giving up stuff. <laughs> we can leverage our local street connections. We don't, don't have know. street connections. Yeah, we don't. We're going to do some sleuthing instead. Roll three dice. Four successes required. And we got a skull. Of course, we got a skull. This is going to be the skull over here. I have to like, go ahead and... Okay, and we have one more. We got nothing. Yeah. Zero out of four successes. Oh, that's successes. a bestial failure. You're gonna get more hungry from it. Too, yeah, it's not I cool. Think. It's not cool. Continue. Yeah. You're unable to track down anyone associated with Elio. Plus one hunger, and plus two XP. The XP is great. I'd rather the successes. I'm gonna have you roll yeah. from now on. That wasn't great for you. Okay. We can try leveraging our local connections, which I guess we'll do. <laughs> sure, why not? Why not? I'm going to have you roll this time. Okay. I just trust you more. Okay, already better than I have. Still better than I have. So we failed. Two out of three. That's unfortunate. Sorry. You could have spent your last willpower on me. Oh, no, you your could. contacts come up empty. It's not great. Results, plus two XP. And I, I mean, believe, at least you're getting XP. I believe it's now your turn. I have to give up now. Give up the search for now. That's why they have to give up the search. Oh, now. I see the uh, issue. But why would they have that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Give up the search. Which means, I believe, update the map. Nope, we are good to go. Update the map as displayed. That's showing me a thing over there, but showing me on... Showing me an icon. The problem is it's showing it to me on a thing where my camera hole is, which is a slight problem. Yeah. I'll look at it later when it shows the next map opportunity. Oh, that's true. Okay, your turn. All right, we got big scary dude. All right, what are our, the rest of our objectives? Investigate the thing. Find Katya. How do we? Where do we? How are we supposed to find her? I'm not clear on that. I think the dude was supposed to help us, but how does he help us? If we go to the stats, no, the map. If we go to the map location. It's not showing it to... Oh, over here? No. I don't know. Okay. Like, you don't know how to use these guys? Not offhand. Okay. Let's go. I don't know. Let's just go crazy. I think he helps the stats in adjacent regions, but I'm not certain. Is it going to boot you out? I'm going to start a fight. As soon as you enter the neighborhood, you sense something's off. You feel a thousand eyes on you and realize it's too early to venture oh. someone else's domain. You decide to retrace your steps. I think anytime there's these in play, that's that's where we're being pushed out. Over here, there's not one here. I think it's that there's control in those areas. That's what I'm saying. Know, the, these control the markers, hasn't. yeah. So where was I? So you can expand out to no, these no, two. No, no, it's kicking me back to where I was, which was here. Yes. Which is fine. I'll just you try to fight that there. cube or whatever. Reveal three encounters at location. We have uprising last rites. We have resources, belittling schemes, belittling, bedding, bedding schemes. We have nighttime robbery, and then we have new, new adventures. All right, let's do an uprising. Last rites, part one. The media have been reporting a string of supernatural murderers, and an influential property developer is the latest victim. The crime scene may hold clues to what happened and why someone would want him dead. The door of the man's apartment is broken and only fixed with police tape. Inside, you find furniture has been overturned. The wallpaper and wallpaper. Oh my gosh. And wallpaper is peeling from the walls. What will you do, Orlando? Conduct a thorough search of the apartment for useful information, or use your arcane powers to divine what has transpired here. Should I use my arcane powers? I recommend arcane powers. Okay. That's hard. hard. You told me that. You said I recommend I did, it. I didn't read it. Go ahead. It's okay. I'm really good at it. You need four successes, and you already have one from Occult, and you rolled nothing. Oh, wait. Okay. Here we gotta be one of these. Yep. There we go. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a no. Okay. Whatever. You said that something transpired here, but you were unable to discern the details. Great. 
We're not making the headway. This is more like my first game, how that went. Alright, let's conduct a search then. Only need one success. And you got one. Three out of three. Beautiful! Finally! Finally, we're doing something! You find a panic room, and the internal CCTV footage shows only a man screaming and clawing at the walls before he drops dead. You replay, you replay the footage over and examine it closely. Very br briefly, you see the outline of a human apparition, some kind of ghost. Encounter continues in Isola. Okay. Plus one XP. And that is Uprising Monument. Next encounter is in Isola. Isola is where? Over here. Right there. Right next door. Okay. Put down a little bit of a magnifying glass in Isola. And a magnifying glass in where you are over here. Cool. You okay? Dante. My turn. I guess I should continue to Isola, right? That seems sure. reasonable. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and move to Isola over here. We are going to reveal three encounters at this location, and we'll continue that uprising encounter. Oh, uh, that oh, was the wrong one. That was the wrong one. Meant well. <laughs> You've heard that the Torida Enrico Slinadi claims Isola distri District is his domain. Slinadi holds exclusive parties with guest lists that secure his influence. If you can spoil his reputation somehow, then he may lose his grip on the district. He is reputed to have a fondness for drag performance and cabaret. He is also known to have a short temper, and you think you can use that to your advantage. You know that one of the parties is happening soon. Your first step must be to learn more about what is taking place, when and where. Where's the party at? What will you do, Dante? Mingle with high-profile figures who are likely to have received an invitation and pose as a fellow guest to see if they will discuss the event with you. That's likely what I'd do. Take to the streets to see what rumors there might be about the event and its organization. No, I like to mingle. Yeah. I mean, I look like I look like I could mingle. You could schmooze. I, I I believe I up my stats for like things like this. You see, I already have two successes. Roll two dice, and again, look at that. Look at that. Like, what are the chances? Yeah. I don't have any willpower. You got another. Oh, I do. Why can't I spend the willpower? Oh, I can. They're, they're red. That is. You bad. got another bestial failure. You were unable to learn anything useful. You're about to go hungry. Mm, yeah, I think so. I think so. Plus one hunger, and plus two XP. The Whoa. XP part is gold. I mean, you have two XP. Take the street to see to what rumors we need. Let's try again. Roll two dice, and I don't have any automatic successes here. I should have been using some of my stats over here. I was not looking at that. I. So I think there is a timed aspect when yeah. you start, because it seems like that use one resources for plus one automatic success is black and then goes gray. I don't think it's a time. I think it's just I'm rolling beforehand. No. Continue for confirm failure. All your inquiries lead to dead ends. You're bestial, dude. I am not doing well here. Okay. Is my hunger at five? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm going to stop my inquiries for now, because my hunger is at five. That's the thing, is when you choose to keep doing all the actions yeah. in a place, it's just making you more hungry. Update the map as displayed. It's going to be that. Okay, cool. Go for it. So when I go to do a roll, though, I want you to see, because some of the things are black and then go gray, and it's not because you're rolling. I don't think. Between each hour and the next, the city phase occurs. Here, the Camilla takes its actions following a hidden agenda. When they would place the fourth cube inside location, they instead take control of it. Jurgen asks to speak to your assembled Kodui. He says he was out taking a walk and there were unmarked black bands of suspicious looking goons out on the streets of your domains. He also says that strangers have been asking around after you. Ew. Yeah, it's a little inappropriate, honestly. He thinks the Camilla are trying to muscle in your territory and that they probably use your Kodui as a, mi as a minor threat of little consequence. He suggests that you may want to do something about that. Oh, I'll do something about it. Bande Nera now has two Cumberland influence. Where's Bande Nera? Bande Nera is one of these over here. Is this this one? No, that's Sempion. Bande Nera is over here. Okay, and Sempion now has one Cumberland influence. Okay. okay. Simona's turn. Okay. Well, keep it is control of all annex locations by solving Cumberland encounters. So we can try to keep control of our locations. Oh. So in Sempion, for instance, you probably have a new loca location that you can try to a new encounter. Now that it's later, I want to try going here. You can try. It'll if you get bumped back, back, 
The, well, okay. That's fine. A sushi to the neighborhood, you said something's off. You feel a thousand eyes on you. Why do I keep thinking it's I don't different? I don't know. Any encounter trigger though. You did trigger an enemy encounter. Okay. As you're walking along the street, you can read it. As you're walking along the street, a group of two men and two women are moving in the opposite direction towards you. They are each pale, tall, athletic, and wear dark clothes with bulges under their jackets. As they get closer, you notice that they are wearing discreet radio air earpieces. They are almost certainly lackeys of the Camarilla. What will you do, Simona? After taking them to an alley, confront them... Uh, Simona, if I move to Sampion, okay. After taking them to an alley, confront them and scare them into leaving the district altogether, or lure them into an alleyway and fight them. Both difficulties are hard. Fight. The risk is harder on fighting, but you can you can go for it. I'm not. What's the reward? Is my question. Oh, I could try to lose them in the streets as well. <laughs> That's a possibility. It's not though. Um, what do you think? I think you want to fight them. I think you should probably yeah. try losing them in the streets. What is the rewards that you get? It does not clear. Not clear. I'm gonna fight them. Of course you are. Let's just see. Let's try a hard do difficulty it. Do thing. It. See how it's black? Okay. Now th just don't start rolling. You can use a resource to get an automatic success, or you can use celerity to get an automatic success. You're using celerity to gain one automatic success. If you fail, you'll gain hunger. Okay. So roll a die. Oh, I see. I have to roll to even. Yes. Nice. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. And now you have plus one success on the first check, which means now you need one less success. That's already pretty good. Wait, what happened there? Oh, so, so roll, roll, you have to roll them in your hand first. Roll them in your hand and it'll register. Pick up both dice and roll them. No, no, give... Yeah. But I, I don't want to miss what I rolled. Yep, yeah, here. Do it like this. One second. Oh, I see. I think that okay. actually gave us an extra blink. I know, I know. Huh? Confirm. But either way, we did it. Thank God we did it. You jump your tails, beat them senseless, and leave them bleeding on the concrete. Oh, heck yes. Heck yes, that's why I did it. Plus three XP. <laughs> I really should have you roll for me. And I'm not hungry. Sempion now has zero Arnark influence. We got rid of it. Yay! This means we got an objective, I believe. Maybe not. No. Why not? Why not? I want an objective done. Okay. We have Sansiro's turn. She's currently in a location that she could try taking control of. She can also go to Bande Nair, which I believe Bande Nair. Let's go to Bande Nair. Yeah. Did I get knocked out from the last time? I feel like I may have. Yeah, but... Let's go to the map over here. Bande Nair is not controlled by them. Let's try to walk in there. Let's try to move and see what happens. Nothing. Okay. Reveal three encounters in the location. We have Uprising Street Monopoly Part 1. We have Camarilla Black Vans. Let's look at the black vans. You see a black van parked in the street. There's a top-end vehicle in excellent condition. The windows are made of glass that you cannot see through. You recall there have recently been sightings of similar vans near Kindred Hangouts and Havens in the district. The engine and lights are off. The owner does not seem to be around. Let's steal it. What will you do? Attempt to trick the door lock to gain access to the van. Brute force your way inside the vehicle, or leave the vehicle alone and move along. We're going to brute, brute force our way into the vehicle. Okay. I'm going to insist on rolling dice, even though I probably shouldn't. Now, I could use a resource for one on my excess. We need three successes. Yes, we're going to do that. That was probably a mistake, because I'm going to roll terribly. Hey! Aha! Uh -huh. that, was, that was actually Perfect. good. Perfect. Continue. You smash the windows, open the door, you trigger a protective alarm that makes an ear-piercing noise. You quickly swipe the surveillance materials and radio on the passenger seat. Nice. Good job. Lucky. For the first time. Negative one resources, plus one XP. The owners of the van emerge from a nearby building in response to the noise. They shout when they see you and brandish deadly looking firearms, which they show no hesitation in using. Oh my god. You should fight them. What will you do? Flee the scene. <laughs> yes, of course we're going to flee the scene. We're going to flee the scene. 100%. Roll two dice. We can use Slowdy for two on excesses. Let's do it. Roll one die. That was probably a mistake, but we're going to do it. No, you're fine. Woo! -hoo! Okay. All right, so you got the two automatic successes I believe so, now. but I believe I can still probably roll yep. for the failures. Yep. Okay, let's roll for the failures and see if Don't I can get fail. that. Okay. 
do that. There we go. Success. Continue. Good job. You escape unscathed. Probably should have fit fight them. Fitting them. Fighting them. Just to clarify fighting. for anyone who's like jumping through the video, the dice when we roll them aren't always registering, so we are putting them to the face that we did roll and if you triggering seen, yeah. it, we're not fudging any rolls. You should see. You should always be able to see us do it. Orlando's turn. Your turn. Orlando. So we can still go here? You can just invest you reveal three encounters at the location. So that's the cost of the action. The cost is you're committing. No, no, no. I want to go to here. Oh, yeah. You could go there. For the thing that you did. That makes do. sense. Do it. Reveal three encounters. Yeah, so it's Last Rites Part 2. That's the one I should have clicked the first time around. It's okay. You continue your investigation into the ghostly murder. You think that examining the victim's body may yield further useful information. You learn that it has been transferred to a morgue in the Isola district. The access to the morgue is restricted. However, you must... However, you must pose as a law enforcement official to gain access. I read that wrong the way I inflected. Okay, so I can either tell a convincing story as to who you are and why they should let you in without the appropriate ID, or simply charm and sweet talk your way inside. Let me look at my stats. I have stealth. You have more physical. And streetwise. You have combat. You're very physically. Yeah. I guess I'll try to be convincing. That's not good. Yep. Which means you have to do that fake thing here, unfortunately. The ma night manager doesn't fall for your story, and they ask you to leave. Oh, no. No hunger, at least. Yeah. You still have an option. Okay, so I guess we can still try to charm them. Ugh. I never could have done it. Continue. The night manager is impervious to your wiles and they ask you to leave. Okay. That's pretty much it. You know it. that charming is a personality. I'll work on it with the XP they just gave me. We will give up. As you exit the morgue, you see a man in a cheap, rumpled suit pacing nervously and smoking a cigarette. He says he is a ghost hunter and that he has been following the murderers. He believes there is a vengeful spirit that dwells in the Cimitero Monumental. He intends to go there and conduct an exorcism and he asks for your help. <laughs> okay. Uh oh. You're straight across suspicion. Yeah. Dante's turn. So, I'm here as well, which means You're I hungry. do. I'm going to try to reveal three that. encounters. I'm going to go to Uprising Part 2. Let me see my stats. I am more mental and social. I think I can do... I can't even do Uprising Part 2. Why not? Maybe because you're so bloodthirsty or whatever, you can't do the talk one. We're going to go with resources. Try to get some more resources for those automatic successes. You visit an exclusive restaurant owned by a famous television chef that is known to be busy and booked for months in advance. You know that there are figures in Milan that would literally kill for a table reservation, and so you hope you can secure one for the maitre d', which you can use later as a bargaining chip. What will you do? Convince the restaurant manager that finding a free table as a favor to you would be worth their while, or threaten the restaurant manager to find you a free table or otherwise face the dire consequences. We're going to convince them. Otherwise, die. And we can use a resource, which I, I don't want to use a resource, because we already have three, and the whole point is getting resources. Ooh, that works. Good job. You secured the reservation. Nice. You made reservations. It's like a... What I dreamed the whole day, I was hoping I'd secure a reservation tonight. One XP plus one resources. I, yeah, killed, spending... I killed four people attacking me. You made reservations. Hey, hey, we can't all be heroes. Not all heroes wear capes. Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> Bande Nira now has two Cumberland influence. Uh-oh. Bande Nira, that's going to be up here. No, it already has two. There we go. And Semprium now has two Cumberland influence. Semprium, I don't want to have that. That's not good. Mm. Simona's turn. Okay, should I try to fix the purple problem here? You could always try to fix the purple problem. Go for it. Investigate. So usually you're already there. Oh. I didn't mean to do that, but I knew them. Okay, none of these are the thing. So should I just try to... 
Oh. Interesting. Remove one influence of an enemy faction. That's just a straight up cost. But it costs four resources? Yeah. And we have four? Mm, we do have four. Do we want to do that? I, 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 I think we worked for the resources fairly hard, so I'm not in a rush to do that, but you can do it. Okay. Reveal three new encounters. Oh Time will action, constructive arson, or enemy patrol, or cash collection. Should I keep looking for... I was looking for the uprising one. I mean, Camarillo is going to remove the influence, which will help us maintain control. Let's do arson. That does channel. sound like something that you would do. You have heard that an abandoned building in the district has suddenly become a hive of activity. Vehicles are often parked in front of the building, and kindred have been seen entering and leaving. It seems that Camarillo vampires are using the premises as a base for surveilling and hunting their enemies. Sabotaging the building would create a serious setback for them. What will you do, Simona? Wait for a quiet moment to trick one of your door locks, trick one of the door locks, so that you can sneak inside and set fire to the interior, or hide and wait by the door for someone to leave so you can sneak through the open door and enact your sabotage. Um. What are you gonna go for? Obviously, I want to try that one, but like, I don't understand why you wouldn't. I mean, I, I guess I have a zero stealth. Let's try this. Okay. Let's see where you go. Two successes, not bad. Yeah, these, this is, let me just go one ahead. One of them should have been, yeah. yeah. And then one was caught. And then the other one you can go ahead and roll again. <laughs> Let's burn this place down. You covertly access the building. Tight. You splash petrol across the floor, light a flame, and then make a quick exit. The building is quickly engulfed in fire. Nice. Nice. Sampio now has one camera influence. Nice. Okay. I feel like we're fighting an uphill battle. They just put two down there. We have to like work hard to Alright, Bondi and we're over here. I think we're gonna go ahead and reveal three encounters the location I'm at. Street Monopoly Part 1, or resources to get under arrest, or Camarilla, constructive arson. That's Let me look work. at this real quick. I just want to see. So we need control three locations. Find Katya, investigate the Marriott Hotel, which is right here. In Washington. Keep control of all Anarch's locations by solving Camarilla. In okay. And then Uprising, Monument Hall, next encounter in Isola. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go back to main over here. I am going to do constructive arson. I'm trying for constructive arson. You've heard that an abandoned building in the district has suddenly become a hit to a hive of activity. This, this is the exactly same, what I just exact did. same, yeah, yeah. So same, same type of looking. We're gonna skip the text in this one because we just did it. I'm gonna again quiet moment. You do what I did. I'm gonna do what you did. Well, I'm gonna fail, but I'm gonna try what you did. <laughs> okay, we can use. I need three successes. We're gonna use aspects over here. If you fail, you gain a hunger. I got a success. Good job. Oh, that is. Like that is my success. That is my success. I rolled for it. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and roll two dice. And did not get the other success we needed. That is unfortunate. Continue. Confirm failure. I'm going to stop using the dice pad because I wonder if it's making it worse. You open the door, but when you step inside, you realize you have tripped an alarm. Uh oh. Plus two XP. And I think we're done. An armed guard, apparently immortal, appears and prevents your entry to the building. What oh, will you mortal. do? Attack the guard. Leave the scene and abandon your plan before you're attacked. We're going to attack the guard. We're hungry, after all. Roll two dice, or we can, again, we need four successes and we have nothing that's helping us. Resources and celerity. So we're going to do celerity. We have yeah. to. Whoa! That, oh, come on. That was You may have missed it, but that's what it was. Okay. That's crazy. And then we're gonna roll two dice. And then one of those. One out of four. The fight goes against you and you're forced to retreat into night before any reinforcements arrive. Plus one hunger and plus two XP. You're hungry. I'm not rolling well. All of your people are hungry. Yeah. I'm kind of hungry. I want pizza. Orlando's turn. Orlando. Okay, so this is 
That's in Solo. That's where I am, yes. right? So should I do that? I would. You got you got it covered. What am I supposed to be doing? Last race part two. I thought, but I already tried that. I can't roll high enough. Oh. Then what was that? What is this? What is the uprising monumental? Next encounter in a solo. I assumed it was that, but I could be wrong. Poison roses. You started this one, I think. Did yes, you? we did. Yeah. Yep. So I'll try it. This is the person who has a fondness for dragon cabaret. And we're trying to work with them. Do you mingle with high profile figures or do you take to the streets to see what rumors there might be about the event? Let's mingle. Or Lanzo. One die. Roll a single die. Confirm failure. Also, you would have had to spend resources to give him a chance. You are unable to learn anything useful. I think the other one I won't be able to do either, but it'll at least give me XP, so I should just do it. Go for I it. Guess. Nice, let's, let's do some math there. So you need two successes. So you either need to roll a crit or you need to spend resources and then roll anything. Do you think I should? I go for it. I trust spend it. Spend a resource? I would. You trust my one roll? I trust your one roll. There <laughs> and you got the crit. <laughs> Success. Continue. You learn the location of you learn the location of the event, and also that an avant-garde drag performer with the stage name of Misty Blue is the star entertainment for the evening. Encounter continues in Monumental. Monumental is it's back. yeah. Okay. Uprising is solo next encounter in Monumental. Isola now has one Anarch influence. Cool. Okay. If we kick this purple one out, then I think we have the three thing. Can you go kick the purple one out now? The three thingy? You What's should. the three thingy? We'll have three locations. And that's one of our We objectives. only have an influence. We don't actually have the location yet. Oh, how do you so get the location? Okay. I'm not entirely sure. Oh. We could investigate the three encounters, or I could try to move it there. I might try to move it there. Let's try I to move there. Should. We're going to try to move there. Okay, we're going to move this out of the way. We're going to go one. Or maybe I should just get rid of the token for Monumental. Mm, no, you know, I will. I will. Reveal three encounters. There's no Camilla options. Uprising, Poison Roses Part 2. Let's do that. You visit a drag bar Monumental, which is known to be the favorite hunt, haunt of Misty Blue. You ask the bartender, and he introduces you to the performer who is quietly nursing a cocktail while a show unfolds on the stage. Your plan is to get her to back out of the party booking at the last minute to embarrass Sis Jonathan and to nominate you in her place as the party's entertainment. Mm -hmm. What will you do, Dante? Use your charm and your cash to convince her to counsel on Sonata, take her to one side, and bully her into following your plan. We'll do the charm and cash. Okay. It seems easy, and I need easy. <laughs> okay, we need... You just need to not fail. We need three successes, right? Yeah, well, you already have. We got successes. We already have. We just yeah. Need, okay, we're good. We're gonna roll. We're just gonna roll. Just don't mess us up. Okay. There we go. Four out of two. Critical success. Mister agrees to your plan and promises you to cancel appearance at the last minute due to ill health. Encounter continues in a sola. Negative one resources. And goodbye. New objective. Oh, we can accomplish it. Uprising a solo, next encounter monumental. We are done on that objective. Lovely. Okay. The solo now has two anarch influence. Oh, now it's two. Okay. Sunrise phase. Okay. Okay. We can now do haven room options. Is that me first? I guess it is. I think it tells us. Is it saying it's his turn? Yeah. You've lost a member of the Kotori. Have they been captured or destroyed? Is this the work of your enemies in the Camarilla, your rivals amongst the Anarchs, or your mortal hunters of the Second Inquisition? What? While your Kotori have taken the first steps towards claiming the city of Milan, you are far from ready to face Prince Prospero. How will you grow your power base? Who among the city's residents, kindred, can you count on as your allies? How will you defeat the ancient and mighty prince himself? I'm sensing the end of the tutorial here. Ruh-roh. 
The story will continue, and the answers to these questions will be found in the full game of Vampire the Masquerade Milan Uprising demo completed. I feel like we're just making progress. We we're never just making even progress. Found out. I'm opening it. Oh, 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 spoilers, go ahead. There's a token there. What's underneath the token? It's a symbol. Oh, is it the same thing? That is a symbol. You probably put it like that? Yep. And there's a film location. Is that the thing you That's looked up cool. earlier? I don't know which one I looked at earlier. I think it was this one. With demo completed, let's see what it says next. Or it just says nothing next. We'll see. I think it says nothing next. I think that's it. That's the end. There's nothing next. Don't look at all the things. Okay. That's Vampire the Masquerade Milan Uprising with the Taboo System. That is just a demo. We got like a full walkthrough round and then just started mm -hmm. to get a taste of, you know, what sense of exploration or what things will happen. But that is uh, Vampire the Masquerade. Vampire the Masquerade Milan Uprising from Taboo. World of Darkness. Uh, World of Darkness game. I'll have a link to the crowdfunding campaign down below. And until next time, I'm Alex. I'm Professor Meg. And have a good one. Bye.